If you're into lifting and you've ever even just been on social media, period, then you likely know Sam Sulek, someone who clearly needs no introduction to the bodybuilding and fitness community. The kid has a massive and impressive physique. Over the last few months, I've gotten so many messages and so many requests of people asking me, what do I think of his training methods? So I figured I'm going to record this video for you guys so I can explain it in detail and share my thoughts with you. In prep for this video, I watched two whole weeks of his training, which is eight YouTube videos. But needless to say, he dropped a ton of insight into his training in these videos. So I'm going to break down all the key points here, and I'm also going to give you my personal opinion. Here are all the key points. I'm gonna first list them all out, and then we're gonna get into each one individually. First, Sam follows a four-day split. That's legs, chest, back, arms, repeat. That's the split, no direct shoulder work, other than some side delts and rear delts thrown in. No set off days, and calves are trained as needed. I know previously he's done a bit higher, but as of the making of this video, he's cut his training volume down just a bit. All sets performed in the gym are taken to failure, and most sets even involve some beyond failure training in the form of partial reps. Now, these workouts include no set amount of sets performed per movement. There's also no log booking of weights. It's just simply a matter of picking exercises that feel good on that day and hitting them hard. The best way I can summarize his training is hard, consistent lifting, as simplistic as possible. So let's break down each one of these points in detail. First, the split a four day split. Now, when it comes to splits, in my opinion, the most important factor is always gonna be quality of work. If you're trying to cram so many exercises, so many sets, and so many body parts into one single session, whatever you end up training at the end of that session, it's gonna suffer. Now, the simplest way to avoid this is to train with a simplistic bro split or body part split, which is essentially what Sam's doing here. The typical bro split, however, does have one major drawback, and most people will run them with body parts being trained just one time per week. This lack of frequency that a body part split typically has is, in my opinion, one major drawback. So much of a drawback, in my opinion, that the lack of frequency completely negates any of the benefits that body part splits have of just training one body part per session. However, Sam's actually completely removing that issue with his setup here. Because instead of taking rest days, he's actually starting the split over again after the fourth day. So now he's essentially doing a bro split but body parts being trained two times per week. Now, this does have its own unique set of drawbacks, but if we look at this one variable alone, he's actually now taking advantage of all the benefits of bro splits, but also all the advantages of high frequency training. That's a perfect example of high quality training sessions and still getting all the benefits that high frequency training has on building muscle. Of course, there's still drawbacks to this setup and I'm gonna get to those in a bit, but first let's address the fact that there's no direct shoulder work programmed in this split. Sam is a very self-aware lifter. He trains according to his physique development needs. Now, realizing that he just has overpowering front delts, he no longer trains them. And that brings up the question, is direct front delt even necessary? It's been my personal experience as a retired competitive bodybuilder and coach to hundreds of bodybuilders over the years. If you're hitting enough chest pressing work during your training and you're especially doing incline pressing, your front delts are generally getting plenty of stimulation. And more overhead press work is not always necessary for developing bigger shoulders. If you have lagging shoulders in general, hit your overhead press work. But if you already have well-rounded shoulder development, more direct front delt work, that could actually cause a disproportionate amount of training volume to be spent on that area of the body. Let's say you're doing 10 sets of incline presses for chest weekly. Now you're doing 10 sets of shoulder presses on top of that weekly. Now you're really performing about 20 sets of front delt work. That's not always beneficial for most physiques. And in my opinion, you'd be better off allocating that time, effort, and energy spent in the gym, spending it on side delts and even rear delts. Now, this is basically Sam's approach, and obviously, I personally agree with it. I would rather train with minimal pressing work rather than no pressing work in the program, but that's for most people and in general. But for someone with a physique development like Sam's, it's not necessarily a disadvantage to completely take them out of his training program, simply based on the amount of muscle that he carries. Now, for side and rear delts, his approach is simply just to sprinkle them in as needed. I would program side delts with chest day and rear delts with back day. That would give those muscles a bit more consistent training in the program. They're also minimally fatiguing and adding some lateral raises after chest work might only take 10 minutes. And the same thing for rear delts after back work. But now let's move to the most controversial topic of this video, the no days off. If you watched my stuff before, you know I'm not a fan of this, but obviously it does work for Sam. Just look at his physique. Now, going back to the split and the high frequency rotation of his training, the one drawback his split does have is he has to actually skip those rest days to keep the frequency high. Now, for 90% of the people I've trained over the years, one to two rest days per week will absolutely result in more muscle mass. Not only that, but better performance in the gym, 
less injury, and less chance for burnout. And some guys even do better with no more than four days of training in the gym. The bottom line is rest days are important. But with that said, I have seen a few genetic anomalies who strive off of seven days per week training. And no, this is absolutely not a natural versus enhanced debate. In fact, almost all the guys that I do know who strive off of training seven days per week they're actually natural. And most enhanced lifters, they actually take more rest days. This is just an extremely misunderstood topic. And honestly, it's really just a myth that guys on PEDs can train more often. Yes, PEDs absolutely enhance recovery. But what most people just don't seem to understand is PEDs allow you to get much stronger. They allow you to train much harder than you could otherwise if you were natural. And as a result, that causes much more muscular and nervous system fatigue, more than any natural lifter can ever produce. The result, any extra recovery ability that they gain from the PEDs, it's actually washed out by the increased demand that they're able to place on their bodies. A hard training enhanced lifter is generally recover at the exact same rate that he would if he was natural. That is, of course, if he actually kicks his training up in the gym proportionate to what he's capable of doing. So to summarize, if someone could sustain and thrive off of seven days per week in the gym, that's gonna come down to genetics way more than it does PEDs. Don't believe me? Ask anyone who's enhanced how many rest days per week they take. Most will tell you that they need one to two days per week. But now let's move on to volume. Sam does on average about eight sets per body part per session. Now, although this is pretty low volume when you look at the total amount of sets per workout, on chest day, he's literally walking into the gym, performing eight sets and leaving. But he's also hitting body parts roughly twice a week. So his volume per body part is actually fairly high, coming in at about 15 to 16 weekly sets. Again, per muscle group. On a typical bro split, most bodybuilders would train one body part per week, but they'll also perform roughly 12 to 16 sets per that muscle group in one single session. Now, going back to my argument about quality of work, that's one of the major drawbacks of a bro split or a one time per week body part split. How well are you really gonna perform your 14th, 15th, or 16th chest set during one single workout? Sam is basically hitting that same weekly volume, but splitting it up into roughly two sessions per week. As a result, he's making each one of those sets and each one of those workouts much higher quality of work. This is something that I'm 100% for, and it's something I do for myself in my own training, all of my clients' training, and in all of my programs. I'm always aiming to spread out that weekly volume rather than cramming it into one session. Again, this is the area where Sam gets all the benefits from a body part split, and also combines it with high frequency training. But what about the intensity? Let's talk about how Sam uses failure in his training. He generally takes each set to muscular failure, and even most of them being beyond, using set extension techniques like partial reps. Now, while this is a great way to ensure adequate stimulus in training, it's also a great way to induce a ton of fatigue. And with the simple fact that he has no rest days in his training plan, this is likely the most significant recovery issue that really needs to be managed in his training. Now, I'm not suggesting you leave reps in reserve with a split like this, as he's only doing about eight sets or sometimes less per workout. And if you wanna get enough stimulation out of those few sets in the gym, they're gonna have to be hard stimulating sets. And if you're trying to do that and train with three or four reps in reserve, it's probably not gonna cut it. But at the same time, constantly training to failure with something like this, most people might run into an issue here. As the volume requirements are low per workout, the effort level needs to be high. And that level of effort required, it generally also requires more rest days. Now, of course, everyone has their own unique recovery abilities. And some people, like Sam, can recover from this type of volume, frequency, and intensity. And it's just been my experience that with a large majority of lifters, they just don't do well training like this. But to remedy this issue, sometimes something as simple as inserting a rest day into this split can pay off huge. But let's talk about another important factor in his training, and that's the overall flexibility. He has no set exercises, no set number of sets to perform per exercise, and basically the only important part of his training is picking exercises that feel good on that day and training them to failure. Now I know the optimal training guys are freaking out hearing this. They're saying, no, you have to hit the clavicular head of the chest. Then you need to train an exercise in the shortened biased position and another in the lengthened position. Whatever other words they like hearing themselves say. But what Sam's training is, is actually the perfect example of what's most important in your training. Hitting enough hard sets to stimulate growth. Now, me personally, I have no issue with flexibility. There are definitely no must-do exercises in bodybuilding. However, personally, I do like a bit more structure in my training. I like to have a goal every time I go into the gym. I like to track progress. That's definitely a bit harder to do when you're performing different movements, workout to workout, and week to week. But it does illustrate that even while tracking, the thing that's actually driving the hypertrophy is the hard training. 
That's something that I try to stress over and over again on my channel. Hard sets and progression is what builds muscle. I generally like to see guys log booking their workouts and having a goal each time they're in the gym. If their upper chest is lagging and they're currently incline pressing 185 pounds for 10 reps, let's aim to get that incline press up to 225 pounds for 10 reps with the same technique. Having a guide, that'll help you get there as quickly as possible. But what's actually driving that growth? Again, hard sets in the gym. Now let's touch on his use of set extension techniques. His use of partial reps at the end of the set, that basically sparked the entire trend of long length partials. Even the science-based community guys have jumped on this. Now I do see a time and place of using methods like this, but I'm just not a huge fan of purposely programming them into training. Training to failure itself causes a large inroad to recovery. Training beyond failure and using set extension techniques, that does create further stimulus, but it also causes way more fatigue. But in my experience, the trade-off for most guys is really just not worth it. With a high frequency training plan like this one, fatigue management is always gonna be key. And the more we further kick up intensity each set, the more we're gonna have to manage that fatigue. Over the years, the most success that I've had personally with myself as well as my clients is the higher the frequency of training, the less often I'll actually use intensity techniques. Now again, of course, this is gonna be individual dependent. And Sam is obviously an example of someone that this works well for. If you're someone who has recovery issues in your training and your volume is not overly high, the intensity techniques is probably something that I would take out first, especially if you're performing them on big compound lifts. Now, if we're talking about isolation exercises and you wanna rep out until you can no longer do part partials on something like lateral raises or cable press downs, go for it. That fatigue is not very high. Personally, I'm just not a fan of doing every set of back to failure and beyond. The fatigue, in my opinion, would just be too high for the amount of stimulus created. But now, let's do a quick summary of everything we've covered so far. Four day workout split, high frequency body part training, body parts being hit every four days, high intensity training, every set to failure, and even sometimes beyond, flexible exercises, flexible number of sets per exercise, flexible weight and amount of reps per exercise. This training is obviously very well dialed in for Sam's training goals and his own unique recovery ability. And the program, obviously it works great for him. Just look at his physique. Now, if we're talking about using this program for the general population, there are some things that I agree with and some things that I disagree with. But if we're talking about Sam, obviously it worked for him. And I'm not one of those guys that's gonna sit here and claim that a different method of training would actually produce greater results for him. If Sam happened to come to me and said, what can I do with my training to make it better? I might actually not change much. The training that he's doing that got him to this level so far is obviously very effective for him. But I can tell you this, if someone came to me and said, I am following Sam's training style and I'm just not seeing the results I want. There are definitely a few things that I would first change. Of course, a completely different approach altogether might be the answer. But if we're gonna slightly change variables first rather than abandoning the whole plan, this is what I would do. First, I would keep the same split. Legs, chest, back, arms. That's definitely a fairly solid split if we're going the body part split route. However, I would tack on side delt work to chest day and rear delt work to back day. Volume wise, that would be completely dependent on the individual, but I would say Say about four to eight working sets per muscle group per session would be a good range. That would equate to eight to 16 weekly sets per muscle group per week. But I would also allocate more volume to body parts that need more attention and less volume to strong body parts. If your chest is massive, but your back is lagging, I wouldn't train both of them with the same volume. I'd cut back on chest work to give you more recovery ability to hit more sets on back day. For intensity, I personally would just remove all the intensity techniques. I would start this person off with training with one rep left in the tank on each set or train all the way up to failure, but not beyond. We could always increase intensity as we go, but if we start a bit lower, that gives us time to get more feedback from our body on how the training is going. And if needed, we could always bump it up. Next. I would first place at least one rest day in this rotation. Instead of finishing just the four days of training and rotating again, I would at least do four on, one off repeat. That would keep the frequency of each body part hit roughly once every five days. But it would also give you one rest day at baseline. And then from here, if we determine that more or less rest days are required, we can add them in. Now for the flexibility component of this training, I'm all for flexibility. And I think if you're at least tracking at least the amount of hard sets you perform in the gym, you're already covering 90% of what will get you the most results. But to track, measure, and adjust any variable of training that will get you that last 10% of results, I'd like there to at least be consistency of exercises trained to focus on progression long-term. In that case, having a plan with exact exercises listed is gonna be a good thing. Now, if you see a pattern here, I'm recommending I'm pulling back on the extremes of most of these training variables. That'll first give us a bit more room to increase or decrease as needed. Now, Sam, of course, is in fact an advanced lifter. And through trial and error over 
the years, he's obviously tailored his program to fit his needs. But he's essentially at the stage now where he's maxed out his training intensity, he's maxed out the frequency of training, and he's also added enough training flexibility to keep his adherence to lifting high. Now, that's the perfect example of somebody maximizing their training for them. But if you're not Sam Sulik, I wouldn't start there. I would first cut back, make the changes I recommended, see how your body's progressing, and then make those changes as needed. Overall, I do like Sam's training. I think any program that keeps you in the gym consistently and allows you to train progressively, that's an excellent program. It just needs to be suited for the individual using it. And if a program like this just doesn't seem to be working for you, starting with a bit less and adding to it as needed over time, that's always gonna be a better option than maxing out everything and having to scale back. And if you want the programs that I personally recommend to build more muscle using proven old school bodybuilding methods, all my old school mass game programs are down below. And as always, if you wanna see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.